And we're back talking with Joanna Barron, who's the co-author of a new book called Pandemic Panic, which looks at all the different ways that governments responded during the pandemic and restricted our personal freedoms. So, Joanna, we've been talking about some of the strange examples that governments came forth in terms of ways that they restricted our personal freedoms during the pandemic, ways that were maybe unreasonable. But are there any examples of uh, restrictions that governments imposed that you think actually might have made things worse in terms of our personal health? Yeah, absolutely. So the first example, of course, to point out is the gym shutdowns. Many people rely on gyms for their physical fitness. We know, even though it became kind of unpolitically correct to point out that the more physically fit and maintaining of a healthy weight that you were, the more likely you were to fare better if you did catch COVID, as most of us did. Um, and in most provinces, gyms were completely shut down, even uh, with you know masking and distancing requirements. Although I will say this is one area, people ask us if we had victories, and one outlier area was we challenged the Ontario spring 2021 stay at home lockdown order insofar as it shut down gyms in Ontario that catered exclusively to disabled Ontarians that had specialized equipment or disabled individuals that relied on the equipment for their basic mobility, cognitive function. Um, and we actually prompted the government to give an exemption for disabled Ontarians. And I understand that some gyms use that as a loophole. Uh, I don't make any comment about that, but I know that it was happening. Um, and then, of course, you have the mental health impacts, right, of severe gathering restrictions, mm -hmm. um, of lockdowns on churches. Um, we intervened in the challenge brought by a church called Toronto International Celebration Church, which is a 1,300-person facility in North York. Um, that was very committed to uh, pandemic measures. They even uh, had individually packaged communion wine. They were socially distanced. They had masking requirements. They never had an instance of viral spread. Um, and the Ontario restrictions would have restricted them to 10 parishioners in a facility that could hold 1,400 and so many more, even distant six feet apart. Um, and that was a really heartbreaking case because we got to know some of the parishioners of that particular church. Many were new Canadians, that the church was their only connection to any type of community. Many were elderly that couldn't access services by Zoom. And uh, as I'm sure you're aware, accessing a service by Zoom is not the same as benefiting from the community and community support of in-person worship. Uh, I believe one of our colleague organizations, the McDonald Laurier Institute, published throughout the pandemic what they called uh, COVID misery index. And of course, uh, the mm -hmm. United States had one of the worst, you know, rates of death from COVID, or the worst, I should say, in the world. Um, however, uh, Canadians should not be smug. We should recognize that when we looked at all the metrics of economic impact, social isolation, impacts on things like uh, health, as including mental health, Canada was pretty much at the same level of COVID misery as the United States. Uh, so, yes. Mm. So let's go back to that first point, though, about uh, gyms. I mean, in, intuitively speaking, you might think that, well, if you've got a, a packed gym with a whole bunch of people that are exercising and they're huffing and puffing a lot, that it might spread the virus more. Was there actual scientific research that showed that that wasn't the case? So that it wasn't the case in gyms? No, I, or, I think or, or gyms that, were always... Yeah, that, I would say gyms were always high risk propositions. I understand. I think that there were ways and we saw many local businesses do park workouts or outdoor workouts. I personally, you know, worked out to workout videos at home. So I would say gym gym lockdowns at certain moments when you had uh, an airborne virus were justified. Um, however, there were mm -hmm. many intermediate measures masking, social distancing, capacity requirements. Um, there were trade-offs, and we just didn't see any attempt to make those trade-offs. Mm -hmm. uh, and I do think that we should, ought to have expected that, demanded that from our governments. Yeah, I think that's fair. It seems often that they just had these blanket restrictions without trying to really surgically make sure that they were the restrictions were as, as minimal as they could be. I mean, a good example yeah. of this uh, and physical exercise is golfing. I mean, the Ontario government banned golfing 
which seems like the perfect sport for for a pandemic because you know it's a huge outdoor activity people can easily spread out and so forth and yet the government just came in and said nope because some people might gather and have beers in the parking lot afterwards at least that's what uh, the premier had said we'll be back with more uh, chatting about the new book pandemic panic